That bone is probably 600 years old, Christian. Wow. It's the sort of thing that an archaeologist finds in an ancient grave. But the bone itself hasn't changed that much uh, over the years. So here's a sort of more modern skeleton. See if you can find that same bone on the skeleton. Okay, let's see. Wouldn't go there because it doesn't look that much the same. Um, how about right here? Like that. So yeah. what part of the skeleton is that? The top of the leg. You're right, the top of the leg. This, this is the ball that goes into the socket at the hip joint. Okay, now look at the other end. Hey, it's hollow. Are you surprised? Yes, I always thought it would be solid. Well, as a matter of fact, it's a uh, it's good thing it is hollow. In fact, see that sponge sitting over there? Mm-hmm. It's not really hollow like this because this one has sort of worn away. After all, it's 600 years old. When the person was alive, the inside of the bone was filled with a spongy material sort of like this. And it's a good thing, too, because inside those little holes in the sponges, your body makes various parts of your blood and, and, and supplies various minerals. Hmm, for your whole that. body, so it's important that it's that that's uh, that takes place inside there. But in addition to that, the sponge is fairly strong, isn't it? Yeah. But the fact that the bone is hollow, even in this form, means it's stronger than if it were solid. And that's the thing that surprised you. Mm -hmm. Well, let's do a scientific experiment now to see the difference between something that's solid and something that's hollow. Back there on the shelf, I have a scale. Okay. You want to bring it up and put it up here on the table? Here, I'll take those rods too. Okay. Okay. Turn around here so that you can see it, because here are two rods, and we'll weigh them. Here's a solid rod. What does it weigh? Well... That one is a one pound. Am I seeing? Well, it's down just... It's a little below one, mm -hmm. right? Just remember where it is. We don't care okay. exactly what it weighs. Because here's another rod, but this time it's hollow. Exactly the same. About the same, okay. Now we'll do some experiments by stressing it. So take the scale and put it back there. And there's two barbell weights back there. You want to bring okay, them up? Yeah, I see them. Okay, see the barbell weight has a hole in the center. Mm -hmm. So I want you to thread it onto this rod. Okay. And we'll stretch it between the table and the shelf over here. Bring it down to the center and then slowly let go. Okay? Yeah, I think it'll stay. All right. Now let's, that's the solid one. Now let's do the same thing with the one that's hollow. Okay. Now you thought that the solid one would be stronger. And remember, both of these have the same amount of, of material in them now. Okay, look at the difference. I hmm. thought this one would be stronger yeah. than this one. Well, pound for pound now, or, or gram for gram, Whatever is hollow has more strength. And it makes some sort of sense because if you're going to stress it like this and bend it, the bigger around it is, why the harder it is to bend and stretch and so forth. And scientists and engineers have used this principle. Chair legs are made of hollow, I think, because they're stronger, and pipe racks and all that sort of thing. So they, they've been using that principle for, well, three, four hundred years, or maybe about the time the, of that bone there, six hundred years. But nature has been using it for millions and millions of years because pound for pound, the hollow thing is stronger than the solid one.